Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 1000. 135. 1135. Problem number one. The pro very first problem on the page number three. Number 31 is already on the blackboard as you can see. Let's get going, shall we? We are told that we buy we're going to buy X students and one adult. Students cost two dollars, adults cost three dollars, and we're further told we're going to spend between eleven and fourteen dollars. Between eleven and fourteen dollars means that we can spend exactly eleven dollars or up to fourteen dollars or anything in between. The question simply is what is one possible value of X? Let's find out, shall we? If we're going to buy X students and each one of them costs two dollars, we're going to spend two times X dollars on the student tickets. We are further told that we're going to buy one adult, which costs three dollars. And this amount of money that we spend has to be between eleven and fourteen. Less than or equal to, less than or equal to. Equality is there. Equality is there because we can spend exactly eleven dollars or exactly fourteen dollars or anything in between. All we do is solve for X now. And find out the possible values of x, and that's all there is. Let's subtract 3 from, from the entire inequality. 3 is going to drop out, we end up with 2x here, less than or equal to, less than or equal to, and here we're going to end up with 11 minus 3, which is, which is 8. Here we're going to end up with 11, there we go. There we go. 2 times x has to be between 8 and 11, which means we can spend, we can buy 4 student tickets, which will cost $8 exactly. Or we can buy up to five student tickets, which will be ten dollars. We we'll still have a dollar left over to buy the adult ticket. So the possible answers are four, four, five. You can grade in either one of the, either one of these two answer choices, four or five. Let's go to the next one. Number thirty-two. The next question is very straightforward, very simple. We simply have to find the mean, the average of 12 numbers, 12 values. I need the room. We have 57, 62, 58, 58, 59, 58, 62, 55, 68, 51, 50, and 65. And the question simply is, what's the average of these 11 numbers? These are the, these are the ages of US presidents when they assume the office. And the question is, what's the mean age of these 12 presidents when they assume the office of presidency? This final, shall we? We're going to pretend, I'm going to pretend, That the mean is 60. I'm just going to pretend that. I do not know exactly what the mean is, obviously. We do not know what it is. We're going to pretend it is 60. We're going to figure out well, how much deficit we have or how much surplus we have, and we'll adjust accordingly the number of 60, this, the value of 60, and we'll figure out the exact, exact, exact mean. Let's begin, shall we? So if the mean is 60, in other words, in other words, if all of these numbers were 60, if all of these 12 entries were exactly 60, the mean would have been exactly 60. But they are not obviously, so we have to adjust for them. Here we see a deficit of 3, here we see a surplus of 2, a deficit of 2. This is where you have to slow down, you make sure you do your counting properly, otherwise obviously we will not get the right answer. Uh, we have a deficit of 2 here, I have to stop talking here. A deficit of 1, a deficit of 2, I see a surplus of 2, a deficit of 5, because 55 is 5 less than 60. Here we have a surplus of 8. Here we have a deficit of 9, a deficit of 10, and a surplus of 5. That's it. And then we'll see what happens. Well, let's see what can we do here. Oh, there we go. I see a negative 2, a negative 1, a negative 2. A negative 2, a negative 1, a negative 2. That's a, that's a negative 5. That's a negative 5. I'm, I'm getting like paranoid because that's too, that seems too good to be, for me to be, for me to be, uh, it seems too good for me to be true. Because it's too simple here. You see negative 5 and a positive 5. These four entries play no role. These play, these, these negate each other. We're done with those. There we go. 
Here's another one, positive 2 and negative, that's gone. We see a negative 3, do we see a positive 3 here? No, we do not see positive 3. So this negative 3, this negative 3, and a negative 5. Oh, there you go, by golly, what do you know? I'm going to do it in a different color. And I'm going to put them in a different shape, negative 3 and a negative 5. That's negative 8. And here's a positive 8, they play no role. There you go, we are all done. All over and done with. It looks like we have a negative 19, negative 10, negative negative 9, negative 19 and positive 2. You must pay attention. Make sure you don't miss anything. We have a we have a deficit of 17. We have a deficit of 17. In other words, we were wrong. In other words, we were wrong in assuming that the average was 60. Average is not actually 60. Average is 60 minus 17 over 12. Why over 12? This because this deficit of 17 has to has to be spread evenly among the 12 entries. That's all. 60 minus 17 is the same as 60 minus 1 minus 5 over 12. Because this minus 1 actually is 12 over 12. 12 over 12 and a 5 over 12 will give us 17 over 12. 60 minus 5 is 59. So all we have is this thing. And since since this is a gradient problem, or for, or, or for that matter, even if it were a multiple choice problem, they couldn't possibly ask us for the exact answer because they're not going to give you answers that goes on forever. They're looking for something to the nearest tenth. The problem says, what is the, it says right there, round your number to the nearest tenth, which makes our life very easy. We just have to figure out what this is to the nearest tenth, 5 or 12. Let's do it here. Let's do it right here so that you can see all of this thing until the very end. 5, 12, nearest tenth, 5 divided by 12. So introduce a decimal, we get a 50, that's a 4, that's a 48, here we get a 20, if we introduce a 0, 20 divided by 0 will only give us 1. We don't have to continue any more than that, because it doesn't matter what it is after that, even, even if this is more than 5, the next digit, if it's, even if it's more than 5, this will only become 0 0.42. Whether it's 0 0.41 or 0 0.42, when you round it to the nearest tenth, it's just 0 0.4. So this is just, this is approximately... 59 minus 0.4. Why approximately? Because we're rounding it to, a decimal to the nearest tenth. 59 minus 0.4 is 58.6 is what we need to grade in. As long as we grade in 58.6, we are done. That is the correct answer to the nearest tenth. Let's do the next one, shall we? I need a little break. Just give me one second. Number, number 33, number 33 we have minus 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 minus 2 times x squared minus 2x minus 1. This is a very straightforward problem. They simply want us they simply want us to write this polynomial equation, this quadratic equation in this form, x squared plus bx plus c in this form and simply tell them what is the value of b. We're looking for the coefficient of x, that's all we're looking for. So let's find out, shall we? We need the room, I'm going to erase all of this now. Again, as always, it's just a matter of paying attention. I'm going to do this first. Negative 2 times x squared is going to be negative 2x squared. Negative times negative is positive. 2 times 2 is 4. Positive 2. And here we just rewrite what we have. Or better yet, we can write underneath it. Negative 3x squared, positive 5x, and negative 2. We're not interested in anything at all, anything other, any, anything other than the coefficient of x. We're not going to waste our time doing anything else. It's just 9x. The value is 9. The value of b, the value of b is 9. In other words, the coefficient of x is 9. Let's do number 34. Number 34 says, the area of the slice as a fraction of the area of whole circle. We're looking for the ratio. What's the ratio? 
plus the ratio of a slice to the circle as the area compared to the area of the whole circle, what is the ratio? And the slice of the show us is this. We are told that the area of this slice, let me just make sure that I'm reading correctly, in a circle with the center O, the central angle of AOB has a measure of 5 5 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4 radian. This angle is measured not in degree but in radians. We know that the entire circle, so here's our slice measured in radians, and here's our whole circle. Now, had we been had we been writing this thing in degrees, this would have been 360. This is not in degrees, this is in radian. Radian, when you measure the angle in when you measure the angle in radians, the whole circle is made up of 2 pi radians, 2 pi radians. And the top, the slice, this angle is 5 pi over 4 radians. As you can see, because, as you can see, because it's, I'm going to erase all of this thing. Because it's a, because it's a, because it's a ratio, ratios cannot have any units. So ratios are unit free. And they are, it is unit free, radians drop out. It's just 5 pi over 4 over, over 2 pi, which is same as which is same as 5 pi over 4 is going to come down, 4 times 2 pi, there you go. Pi's are going to drop out and the ratio turns out 5 over 8. 5 over 8. And that's all there is. Very simple, very straightforward. We have four more problems to go on the next page, four gradient problems on the next page, which we'll do tomorrow. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, if you would like me to help you prepare for the exam, either the math portion or the vocabulary portion or the grammar portion of the exam, which has to do with writing part, if you wish to get hold of me, you can send me an email. Go to my website at kishwaniprev.com. You will find a link there for the email. Send me an email. We'll talk some more. Okay? Bye now.